everybody, this is Larry, this is day 3 of the Lico Dead Area Challenge. Hit like button and subscribe button, join me on Discord, let me know what you think about today's farm. I uh, hope you liked the intro, again, I am just apparently doing random drone videos for my trip, uh, because why not. Uh, okay, uh, I am in New York, it is very cold, um, that's all. I need to kind of get food actually, so let's get this show on the road, let's do this farm, and today we have a hard problem. We have 1411, number of ways to paint, and times three, um, <clears throat> uh, grid. Okay, so you have a grid, it's n by like three, number of ways you're going to do this, no, uh, I mean, this is the same as, uh, is it Fibonacci? No, it's, it's, um, hmm. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like one of the Robber ones, I don't know, I don't I don't really think about this, I, I'm not gonna lie, I think like a lot of times people ask me like, um, you know, isn't this palm just like A, B, and C, and I, sometimes I think of it that way, but I, I actually don't, it doesn't really come up that often, uh, I know that maybe it can help as a training tool and learning tool in the beginning, but that's just not the way I think, for me, I just immediately see a dynamic programming solution, a memorization solution based on brute force, if you will. Um, I mean, it's not that brute force, but it's just that, you know, uh, if you're only looking at two adjacent cells, right? Um, wait, maybe I misunderstood this. Hang on. Uh, okay, because I only look at a symbol 1 and 1 is 12. Okay. So maybe I misunderstood this a little bit. N by 3. Does that also mean um, you do the... Okay, I mean, either way, right? Um, either way, uh, okay. So I think I was thinking about the wrong farm anyway, but a wrong, like, um, idea because I thought it was going to be, like, a, a one-dimensional thing, but it's n by three. But still, the, the question that you have to ask yourself is, um, for us, let, let's say we're doing brute force, where right? we try and brute force every color, we're on, you know, cell... We're, we're given a given. We're given a certain cell. Well, given a certain cell, what is the what is important to that, for that cell? Well, what is important for this current cell is that um, the previous cell, which is the cell to the left, is not the same color, and then the cell that's um, on top is not the same color. Of course, you also don't, don't want uh, one. You also do not run the cell to the right to have the same color or bottom to have the same color, but that. But that is taken care of because when you do those cells, because you haven't filled those cells yet, they will take that into account. So you can take care of, um, you can take advantage of that sort of symmetry. Um, what else is there to say? I, mean, I think that's basically it. And there are a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, because once you realize that you only need the previous cell and the cell on top, well, how many cells are there possibly? Well, that means that you only have to take care of three cells, right? What do I mean by that? That means that um, you only need to know the last row and the previous cell or something like that. And as a reason, I mean, I'm not saying it quite as precise as I I, I uh, can, honestly. But the idea is just to keep track of as few things as possible that allows you to um, to express the, ex uh, the current state. And as a result of that, then a lot of the states you'll find that they're overlapping, which is the whole point of dynamic programming and memorization, is that you're uh, solving overlapping, or how does it go? Um, you know, you basically you're, you're doing the same thing multiple times, right? And that's why you're able to just kind of solve it faster, because a lot of the quote-unquote brute force possibilities are just not possible, right? Or not, not possible, sorry. They're not new so then you don't have to do them again sorry man i don't know why uh, a little bit of a complaint here is that uh my kitchen i don't know why my kitchen is like so much cooler than uh yeah it's, yeah like here where i'm sitting is 53 degrees which is um what is that so it's 11 degrees celsius which is not like freezing cold if you're outside but inside and i'm not like you know, even though I do have a hoodie, it's not sufficient. My 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 um my living room is much 
warmer, which is why I'm like a little bit. Eh. But I go to the kitchen just to film this, obviously. Maybe I need to start cooking something or something. But in any case, so if I'm a little bit weird and fidgety, I blame it on the cold on my in my kitchen anyway. Okay, so I mean there are a couple of ways you can. So all that said, there are a couple of ways you can implement it. Um, the way that I like to, I I think I want to do it is because we are such a small number, we can do it just. Um, you know, uh, because you have, for each row, there are 27 possibilities, and a lot of them are not possible. In fact, only 12 of them are possible, because they tell you that in example 1, so I don't even have to do the math. And so, for each row, um, only one of these 12 is possible, and for one of those 12, there's actually even fewer for the next row, right? So, we can just kind of keep track of that state. Uh, so, let's, let's kind of do it. Um, I'm going to write this in a very funky way, um, uh, if you're not familiar with, because uh, I want to write this as, and this is not the way that um, I would normally write this if I was solving this for a contest, but I want to write it in a way that maybe is un more understandable for people at home, right? Uh, okay, so I'm not going to use the memorize, so I'm just going to use a function f, um, we're going to use index for the row index, or so what row we're in. And then the um, the current or the previous row, right? Something like that. Um, and previous row, so let, let's add index. It's just row number, right? Something like that. Previous row, well, it's an an array of three elements, um, each with each zero to two inclusive uh, for one of the color, right? One of the color, right? Um, yeah, and uh, and of course, there's three things. Three to the three is twenty is twenty seven, but it was reset, um, because that's not a lot of them are not possible. So it's only really only twelve things. So here we know or immediately know that um, n times twelve is the number of states, right? Um, yeah, and n being five thousand, this should be more than enough. Also, there's a mod here, right? So let, let's not forget the mod for now. Mod 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 okay something like that right okay so then let's uh I mean we can pre there's only twelve things we can pre calculate these right so it's not as um yeah so it's not as um so we don't have to do it right um so yeah so then now we want to say if i is not equal to j, then we use j, and now if j is not equal to k, right? So then this is just for each row, right? So here, maybe p for possibility. Uh, we want to do p dot append. Uh, and we could just say i, j, k, right? And maybe I want tuple instead. Uh, right? And, you know, feel free to print stuff to verify yourself, and it should have 12 elements. Maybe I could print it out, the, the elements. Yeah. Um, right. And yeah, so this, uh, okay, what's my output? Output is no. Oh, no, no, st standard out is what I meant. Okay, so 12, so like what we said, that's what we expect, right? Oh, right, so that looks good. Um, and you can actually even pre-calculate for each one of those things, um, what, what the next things could be, right? So, uh, next P, uh, for the next row, so you could do it one more at a time, right? Um, yeah. So then now we go for i in range of length of p, right? Uh, maybe we start with next p. Uh, np dot append, we empty away for now. And then now we have for um, j in range of length of p, right? Uh, we just go, um, uh, yeah. And then now, because we already know that they're, they're um, so on the left right side they don't share any color so we just have to kind of um align the um top bottom right so then now we go if p of i of uh, i guess we just should really be a be a loop right k is you go to p of j of k then good is equal to false so we assume that good is equal to true to begin with uh and then uh yeah so then if it's still good then we np dot append um, let's just say J, right? Or M P of I append J, right? So something like that. 
Um, and in fact, because we did it this way, we actually lied here. We don't even need this anymore. We just need the index number, right? So, uh, so yeah, so then maybe we can go to, uh, uh, how do I want to name it? Previous row number instead, right? So then now we cross this out and we write previous row number is uh, the number in the pre, uh, in P sub index or I or whatever, right? Something like that. And yeah, uh, and that's really pretty much it. We can say return f of uh, maybe the first, kicking off is a little bit awkward, but that's fine. We can handle it, right? Uh, if index is equal to n, then we just return one. Otherwise, um, there is another thing that I, I want to say, may, but remind me later. Well, you can't really remind me, but I want to say something about um, pre-calculation. I'll just add a note. <laughs> uh, Pre-calc. <coughs> um, okay. And then otherwise, um, then now we have the row number, right? So then we just do, uh, yeah, for each one, we, we already know it. So for J in range of length of uh, NP of uh, previous row number, right? Um, then yeah, then we just go something like total do, 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 uh, is equal to zero. Here, total we add it by f of index plus one, uh, and then j is the new row number, and then that's it. And then we just return total mod uh, that, and then we just return. Uh, wait, actually, this is we have to kick it off a little bit differently, right? So we just do for i in range of technically 12, but np is fine too, um, right? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, oops, i, right? Oh, no. Um, one right because this is for the first row um, and and then yeah that should be it let's give it a click oh I forgot to memorize so it's gonna take it's gonna time out uh actually I was gonna not use my uh, cache because I was gonna do something with the the, the things um, but but because now I, we convert it to a row number, we can actually just use cache easily. So I'm not going to do the, the other tricky thing. I was going to do a base three number thing, right? Uh, and this looks good for 5,000, so it should be good, right? So we'll give it a quick submit. I mean, it shouldn't be a wrong answer. Maybe time's out. Okay, right? Um, so far, so good. Uh, I mean, should be good enough. Hopefully that wasn't too fast. Uh, we basically, um, yeah, we basically pre-process this. Or we create all the the twelve possibilities, and then we just know that there's twelve. We map them each to an index, and then for each of those index, we just see which what it's uh, possible. Like given uh, a thing, what is the possible next row could be, and then that's basically it. Um, so I want to talk a little. Uh, yeah, and this is the function about going through. Uh, and the the thing I want to say is pre calculation. The the idea here is that um, well. There are only 5,000 possible answers. That's it. That's what the pre-calculation was talking about. Um, there are only 5,000 possible answers. We could store them, but we can also just do it once, right? Um, like, even if you don't store them explicitly, uh, taking advantage of the fact that, you know, for example, f the, the solution for 5,000 needs a solution for 4,999, right? And so we just don't calculate over different test inputs you also save time there. Um, I'm not gonna worry about the time today. I'm a little bit lazy, but, uh, but yeah, what's the complexity, right? Well, as we uh, kind of wrote it this way, this only has twelve possible things, right? Uh, this is. I actually don't know what uh, what on the order of what this is. So let me take a look. Uh, but I was gonna without looking, you could just set an upper bound and say that this is at most twelve. Each of the twelve things have at most twelve edges, which is already an upper bound. Right, this is 5,000 times 12 for the number of states times 12 would be fast enough. Uh, let me take a look real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, each of these has at most like five things, so it's even so it's even a little bit faster than half of that. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and yeah, stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye.